This is how you are going to defeat the Reaper and unlock the character Red Death in one run without any cheats and just a little cheese. So get your nachos ready because this is your guaranteed nearly AFK method to easily kill the Reaper in Vampire Survivors. And if you're having trouble remembering the build, I'll have a graphic at the end of this video for you to follow summing everything up. The first thing you'll need to do is make sure that you have anything but curse upgraded in your power up section. This is super important because the Reaper's health will be around 1.2 million when we do this right. So adding curse will just make your job harder. I repeat, do not pick up curse at any point during this run. Now, this needs to be mentioned. This can be done without all of these power-ups, but the more power-ups you have, the easier this will be by about a thousand percent. But if you don't have the gold yet, the real must-grab power-ups are Might, Cooldown, Amount, Recovery, and Revive. Everything after that will just make your job easier and more likely to succeed. Now, there are a few items that will make this so much easier, so much so that you might want to spend a second unlocking them before continuing. They are are not required but really do help out. Gati Amari is an item that you unlock by finding and unlocking the coffin in the inlaid library and then surviving for 15 minutes with the new character you obtain, Giovanna. This item will give you a major damage boost when upgraded. Next up, you want to have found the Random Mazo and unlocked a few Arcana. Random Mazo can be found at the top of the Gallo Tower. After you've unlocked this item, you'll have access to Arcanas and I recommend you unlock Awake, Saraband of Healing, and Slash. Awake gives you extra revives and increases your damage and resistance after a revive. This is unlocked by reaching level 99 with Croce, who you can unlock by killing a total of 100,000 enemies over several runs. Saraband of Healing doubles your healing and deals damage in an area based on that heal. This is unlocked when you find the Randomaza. Finally, Slash will give certain items extra crit chance and damage. This is unlocked by reaching level 99 with Llama, who you unlock by surviving 20 minutes with at least 10% curse. Alright, now that we have our power-ups and special unlocks, we need to select Clarice as our character. This method will only work with Clarice since her passive will give our starting items an absolutely ridiculous hitbox and keep us safe all the way to the 30 minute mark while staying at level 2. Next, we'll want to head to the inlaid library. You'll want to set this to hyper mode and leave hurry unchecked. This is because the increased clock speed won't let you get enough experience before the reaper shows up. Now that we are in the stage, the next few steps will determine if you can continue this run or if you have to restart. If you unlock the arcanas I recommended earlier, you'll want to select Saraband of Healing at the start. Thanks to your recovery and Clarice's passive, you'll be clearing the entire screen, keeping everyone very far from you, making it super easy to stay at level 2. Now, the reason I keep stating that you need to stay at level 2 is for a couple of huge reasons. With every level we gain, the enemies will gain a health multiplier, and the Reaper has the largest health pool to multiply. Just going from level 2 to 3 gives the Reaper an extra 600,000 health that we'll have to burn through. Secondly, and probably the most important reason, is that with every level you gain as Clarice, you will lose an extra 100% off her bonus, meaning that at level 2, our Rune Tracer will be trapped in this area, but at level 3, they will frequently bounce outside and not be large enough to cover your character. Now that we have that explanation, you'll want to head straight to this green gem up here. You'll want to make sure that you get Rune Tracer as your second item. You can reroll a few times, but if you don't get it with one or two rerolls left, you'll want to restart your run. More rerolls will just make it easier to obtain the build we're looking for. And now that you've got your starting items, you'll want to make sure that you're subscribed to this channel, because if this guy is helping you, I know you'll find more content that you'll love, and if you leave a like, it will help tell YouTube more people like you need to find this video. Okay, seriously though, if you're able to get the Rune Tracer, then your next step is going to be positioning. There are a couple of things you can look at to help you set up correctly. Make sure your hand is in line with the pendulum of this clock here, and then you'll want to put your belt buckle just in line with this line here. If you're in the right spot, you'll see that the Rune Tracer is going to bounce around just on top of you. This positioning may not seem very important right now since we are wiping the entire screen before anyone can reach us, but it will be the only reason you survive later in the run. Now that you're here, you'll have to wait about 3-4 to four minutes before going completely AFK. What you're waiting for is the red gem to spawn. Now, the red gem isn't just one single piece of EXP, it's all of the EXP being dropped near you. If you've ever gotten to the point you can stand still in this game, you've probably noticed that gems stop dropping around you after a bit. This isn't an AFK check. What happens is, once there are too many XP gems on the ground, the game picks the furthest gem on screen to pile everything into. So if you've ever been running around and just got a load of levels at once, you actually found that special red gem. What you'll want to do at the point the gems stop dropping is check if you have a red gem on screen. If you can't see one, then it's probably just barely off screen. You'll want to very carefully walk around the table without picking up any gems and check the sides of your view to see if you have a red gem. 
This is very important. You absolutely must avoid picking up any gems or you'll ruin your setup. If you don't have a red gem, you have to restart now. That gem is how we are going to get strong enough to defeat the Reaper. Keep in mind that if the gem spawns all the way at the bottom of your screen, you can still get this. It'll just be tricky not to die. So you may still want to consider restarting to get a red gem to spawn closer to you. Now that we've identified where the red gem is, you'll need to move back to your position. And now we just wait. Feel free to walk away for a bit from your computer, but be sure you're back before the 30 minute mark. Once we've hit 30 minutes, you'll have to time this exactly right. First, the Reaper is going to kill everything on screen and run straight at you. When you see the Reaper on your screen, that's when you move. You'll want to get to the red gem as fast as possible. Make sure to pick up your blue gems on the way and maybe a few chests. Leveling up and opening chests makes you invincible for a short period. That's how you can get to a red gem on the bottom of your screen if needed. You'll want to leave most of your chests unopened since this is the only way that we will evolve our weapons to defeat the Reaper. Make note that it is possible you will die before you get to the red gem, but that's why we prioritize picking up at least one revive in our power-ups. If you were lucky enough to pick up the Awake Arcana in one of these chests, then you should have no problem getting to the red gem, and with every death, you will grow even stronger. Now that you've reached the red gem, you're going to shoot up to nearly level 100. This is going to be more than enough to create our build. If you have the power up Banish, you'll want to use it to banish items early to increase our odds of finding what we want. You can banish weapons like Whip, Magic Wand, or Axe, or banish passive items like Armor, Hollow Heart, or Pumarola. These are some of the most common items to see in level ups and will clutter our item pool. The reason you banish these items instead of just re-rolling or skipping is because everything has a rarity to it, and if we remove these items from the pool, we greatly increase our odds of getting what we want. Now here's what you've been waiting for, the build to easily AFK the Reaper. The weapons we want after after obtaining Santa Water and Rune Tracer at the start are Laurel, Lock Lancet, Knife, and Gati Amari. If you don't have Gati Amari unlocked, you can trade it out for Cross or Song of Mana, but we are going to be losing a lot of damage without it. The passive items we'll want are going to be Spinach, Empty Tome, Bracer, Spellbinder, Attract Orb, and Clover. Attract Orb and Clover can be traded out for things like Candle Door, Tiragisu, or even Duplicator, but these main items are what I use to reliably defeat the Reaper, so I recommend following it as closely as possible if you're having trouble. One thing to note if you're taking Gati Amari is that this item's power increases with every ground chicken it picks up. So if you can stand around here long enough to get a few chicken pickups, then that could be the difference between defeating the Reaper in a few minutes and being defeated by the Reaper. Do not pick up any of these chickens yourself, since the cats need to be the ones picking up these items or else it won't count towards their damage. Now that our build is done, we want to move back to our table and set up for our final position. Align your hand around here, close to this line and the small table. Then make sure your belt buckle is just in the middle here on this line. Be sure to pick up your chests on the way to upgrade your weapons and grab your arcana. As I mentioned before, you'll want to grab awake and slash when you see these arcana pop up. It can be a little difficult to tell exactly where you are with everything happening, but if your rune tracers are bouncing around like this, then you are probably in the right spot. The big thing that we want to do is make sure that the rune tracers are bouncing around on top of the reaper. Now we just wait for our kill counter here to go up. Once you see that happen, you'll know you defeated a reaper and there you have it. That's the red death kill guide and this is the build you're looking for. Let me know in the comments if this helped you out or if you're still having trouble.